I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Phil Hudson, who's very, very kindly given up his time to talk to me today from Ukraine. Phil is a British businessman who's been living in Ukraine for the past 30 odd years. Phil, I don't want to make you sound, uh, you know, like you've been there for goodness longer than I've been on this planet. But that's (laughs) right, isn't it? I'm afraid to tell you. Yeah, yeah, almost 30 years now, almost 30 years. Wow. And a little bit before that in Eastern Europe, I suppose you'd say. And so you're here today to talk to me about what it's been like actually on the ground when you've got the Americans and the Brits both saying that an invasion is imminent. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Um, I don't know. I suppose the best way to describe it is I'm sort of ranging from 30 to 70 percent uh, likelihood of them coming in. There's mood swings, I suppose, is one way of putting it. But one thing that does intrigue me is how the British and American position was a little bit different from um, from Europeans, certainly a a week or two ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Britain seemed to be uh, talking up the likelihood of invasion while uh, Europe was talking it down. I just couldn't work out what was going on. And it just occurred to me that maybe the the Brits and the Americans are, uh, you know, engaged in a psyops competition or a fight with with Russia. Um, Instead of denying it, let's say it's going to happen and let's do everything we can to prepare. I mean, one insight maybe is that it certainly was an opportunity to bring lethal weapons in, mm-hmm. which you couldn't do six months ago for fear of being accused of escalation. Um, so, you know, and, and also I think it's um, managed to galvanize the Europeans uh, into more and more of a unified position on sanctions and so on. And um, maybe in actually calling Putin's bluff to a certain extent, um, you know, he'll back down and maybe he won't be so ready to do this in the future. But that's when I'm on the upswing of my mood swing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's when I'm when I'm, I'm on 30% likelihood. At the moment, I'm probably on 60%, coming on 70% likelihood that Putin will come in. But it swings. It swings. Well, exactly. But I wonder if you've got any perspective or any opinion, really, on what it's been like for Ukrainian nationhood, because a lot of people have actually said that it's galvanised and solidified a sense of Ukrainian nationhood. Would you agree with that? Well, it's a a bit like wrought iron, isn't it? I mean, Ukraine constantly gets hammered. You know, this is, uh, you've got to remember, I think it was 91, they voted, there was big demonstrations. No, yeah, 91, there were big demonstrations on the streets for independent. Then I think, was it was it 94, the Orange Revolution, where they came mm. out on the streets when um, the uh, Russian back Yanukovych tried to steal the election? And then it was uh, 2012, sorry, in 2012, there was the um, a Maidan, of course. And so, and, and you know, in the years in between, we'll forget that the uh, two years or so ago, or no, sorry, we went on the, in the Maidan, the, the uh, Ukrainian troops were, were, well, it was a disaster. You know, they're totally disorganized, and yet they still put up pretty good resistance and pushed the Russians back then. Mm. And it was only when the regular forces came in across the border that, that uh, and pushed back the Ukrainians that uh, they sued for peace. And that led to uh, Minsk too and so on. But no, yeah. I mean, um, uh, Ukrainians are used to this. And um, I think what may tell if, if uh, Putin does come in is I think the Ukrainian morale will be much higher than their Russian morale. You know, because, you know, they're fighting for their country. They've got a lot to be proud of. You know, there's, uh, you know, they resisted, um, you know, uh, Putin's support with snipers in the, in the Maidan, you know, 100, 100 uh, people killed right there and then. Since then, 4,000 so soldiers killed. 14,000 Ukrainians in all have been killed since uh, in the last eight years or so. You know, so, so you know. And uh, if you walk around the streets now in, in, in Kiev, there's a tremendous um, youth culture, small businesses starting up for all the troubles. You know, Ukraine is, you know, two steps forward, one step back. But they are, you know, they are making their way westwards. The trading patterns have massively changed now. So, yeah. Yeah. How did you actually end up there then? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Um well, you have to go back a long way. Um, I suppose back, back in, um, what was it, 75, I think, I hitchhiked to uh, Istanbul when it was still fashionable. And I came back uh, via uh, Yugoslavia and um, Bulgaria. 
and it was just intriguing to be to go behind the curtain you know mm. it's a bit like theater and then you see backstage and you see communism and so on and it just intrigued me and uh, so i always wanted to start my own business and um uh had a little bit of money saved up and thought well i'll give it a go you know i had, I had a grandmother also that was in germany between the wars and uh you know i thought that hell you know it's a, fanta- a fabulous or fascinating time in history so why not why not give it a go and if um i fall flat on my face you know i'm an architect i just returned to my profession and um you know, carry on with my profession. I, I could, you know, miss two years, no problem. So I came um, and uh, didn't fall flat on my face. We've done okay. Mm-hmm. Now I have three Ukrainian children with my Ukrainian wife. And um, yeah, Putin's making a more than a fly in the ointment. <laughs> yes. Now pain in the arse. I, I can imagine that's true. Do, do you sort of live each day then sort of thinking... I mean, how how bad is the fear of of what could happen? Because, you know, it would be a bloody battle. I think it's safe to say. Yeah. Well, I think so. Uh, I, I guess so. Um, the uh, the the Brits have actually delivered uh, anti tank uh, missile systems, and um, the Americans the same. But also, critically, Stinger missiles, and this is what tends to level up the playing field. It was the Stinger missiles that um, led to Russia you know, getting out of uh, Afghanistan. And so it may have been a big mistake, you see. I mean, everybody thinks he's so smart, a chess player, but he's more a judo player than a a, a judo um, man than, than chess player. I think he's maybe, maybe he's good at tactics, but he's lousy at strategy because mm. he's just pushing Ukraine further and further away from, from Russia. And I think if he had to come in, I think, I think there could be terrible trouble in Belarus, Russia, you got to remember, you know, Russians and Ukrainians are they're, they're, they're um, share families, cousins, you know, yeah, brothers yeah. and sisters in each other's country. And when people see that people are dying, you know, for what? Mm-hmm. For what? You know, mm-hmm. for some sort of misguided vision of the past, which is which is gone. You know, and Putin, Putin in many ways is the um, author of Ukrainian <clears throat> a new, new Ukrainian narrative. You know, which you need to actually. Uh, establish a, a country on, on firm footings and it's not a myth anymore I mean it's very near you know thousands of people have died you know um, defending the country and that's you know he's created a certain immortality or immortality if you like um, they refer to the hundred that were killed in, in the Maidan as the heavenly 100 mm-hmm. you know and you go to um, uh, you go to St. Uh, St. Michael's and you can see them all on the wall there you know, and, um, and next to them, on, they're running out of war, frankly, now. You've got 4,000 killed in, in the fighting and then a further 10,000, you know, um, not to mention the the uh, one to two million displaced, you know, from mm-hmm. their homes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's r- truly, it's really a, a wicked man, uh, Putin. Well, and I, I would hope to the, think that the world sees him for that yeah, now. Well, uh, yeah, actually, that is what I was just about to ask, because in in this country, two Labour politicians and former leader of the Labour Party, actually, Jeremy Corbyn and Diane Abbott, have both said that actually they believe it's down to the expansion or or the at least to the trying to bring a, about an expansion to NATO and Ukraine seeking to to join that organization, they actually blame the West. Do you think there's any truth to that argument? No, it's absolute garbage. You know, um, what what NATO expansion? Where has NATO got 100,000 troops fully equipped on the border? You know, I mean, P- Putin, oh, he managed to get his, his luxury yacht out, his 80 meter yacht out, um, at the same time as delivering blood for Russian blood, for Russian future casualties. You know, what more, what more do you want to, you know, people forget that actually uh, the West actually supported uh, Central and Eastern Europe, but also Russia. Tens of billion pounds went to Russia to try and manage the transition. And as soon as they started to get, you know, as soon as they got on their feet, you know, you, you know the, old, the old game started to be played out and Putin came into power with his crazed notions, you know. No, I mean, it's, it's nonsense. And if you look into the, the talk about being promised 
uh, not to expand. Uh, there was talk at one time um, of not expanding uh, NATO, but but it never got into any agreement, mm. you know, and Russia has trouble following, you know, agreements that it makes, let, let alone uh, coffee chats or chats at early stages in negotiations. You know, that, that's well covered. You can you can uh, look that up. No, it's it's nonsense. The NATO, he will he will actually refer to uh, Yugoslavia. But in Yugoslavia, people tend to forget that the uh, Milosevic was supporting the you know genocide there you know mm. and so you could stand back as as P Putin would like us to do or, or you engage and try and you know um, stop, stop sort of bestial actions that um, that uh, Putin is prepared to accept. So what what do you think then ultimately Putin wants is this a sort of is this a, a man a former KG, KGB man that actually longs for the sort of halcyon days of the the Soviet the Union and Iron Curtain is this well, is this just longing for the past? Well, he professes that the, the communism was you know a mistake and so on, and it, I think it's probably better to think of him more as an a Russian imperialist. Um, but he has he said that he regards you know the fall of communism as the greatest uh, disaster of the twenty first century. Um, no, I mean you can understand where he comes from. You know, I, I think I'm right in saying that he had a uh, you know dysfunctional childhood. He was in, he was in um, East Germany, wasn't it, when, when the rioting broke out there and feared for his life. And uh, he, he got a sort of a job in, in well, Leningrad as it was, but now St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And he managed to control the issuing of licenses. And he teamed up with, you know, uh, basically crooks, absolute crooks. And he learned the skills of extortion. And he employed the, the uh, skills of extortion in, on the city level. Mm -hmm. And then on the national level, and those those, you know, crude techniques, he's now employing at the international level, and uh, it's basically simple extortion. He says, "What are you also frightened about? What's the problem? You know, you're, 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 what's this hysteria? It's like somebody meeting a, somebody in the bar or something. He and he raises his fists and holds it sort of like a, a foot or two from your face and says, "What are you worried about? What are you worried about?" It's extortion. Mm. It's just pure and simple extortion. And but one thing he's right in, he's he, he's he's frightened of the situation in Ukraine, and he's right. He's actually funny enough. He's right, but uh, not for the reasons you may, may think. Not for the most obvious reasons. Ukraine doesn't pose any military threat at all to Russia. Nor does NATO. Nor does NATO. Um, but NATO. Sorry, but Ukraine does provide a threat in terms of providing a model for the way to transform from um, former Soviet Union country to Western liberal democracy. Um, mm -hmm. And the, what I think, I don't know if he's perceived it, maybe he has, but, but what, what NATO does, or if it's not NATO, just Western support uh, economically or, or militarily in terms of defense, what it does is it provides a shield under which Ukraine can is protected and so determine its own future. Mm -hmm. And in that, Putin is really, that really is a genuine cause of concern. But that's just, you know, that's how, how countries should be in, in civilized, you know, world stage, you know, uh, people, you know, countries should be able to choose their way, make their own mistakes, make their, make good decisions. And you shouldn't be imposed on by other countries with, with brute force. You yeah, know. yeah, no, absolutely. I, I guess the next question, then, an obvious um, next thing to ask would be, what, what, just what on earth would change for for you? Would you leave Ukraine tomorrow? Were there ah, to be an invasion? Yeah, no, that's, 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 yeah, no, that's 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 a good question, and that's that's one that <laughs> my wife are discussing, you know, daily. Um, no, it's very difficult because. Um, I'm an architect by profession, and normally that's a consultant advising, getting fees and putting it in a bank if you're successful. But um, here, I mean, you, you know, certainly in the early days, nobody really is interested to pay an architect for, 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 for design, you know. So, so we, we've actually become, if you like, uh, developers. And so uh, in, a, in a modest way, no, 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 no great big, you know, uh, action. But, but, we're, we're, but, you know, but we now basically own properties here. Mm -hmm. So that leaves us with a, a real dilemma. We have three children now, 
Uh, mind you, they are all thankfully in in the UK, so they're safe enough. But um, you know, I'm getting I'm getting on now, so I'm thinking of retirement and so on. I suppose it'll happen. Um, uh, but all our all our treasure is here, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so we you know we we could leave. Um, but then what? And I think what Crimea has perhaps shown is if you leave your your assets alone, you can lose them. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, so. That, that's the concern. So, and it's, it's, it's very, it's imminent now. We have a decision. Um, we were told all the flights were, uh, you know, cancelled. But um, Ukraine airline, is the, the the national airline, is still running. We have tickets out on the on the 18th, and um, but we have them back again. But what worries me, perhaps most, is, um, uh, and the reason we do that is because we have a, you know, uh, there's a cottage we need to. To fix up for the family back in, in, in Somerset, but um oh oh yeah, and my wife is just reminding me, we have a child on vacation with no, without parents. We do have family that will yeah 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 him and so on, but but it's very disturbing. So we have this di dilemma of leaving and actually leaving, you, you know, uh, 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 you know that our assets vulnerable, or or um, you know going going um, going back to look after our son. But so we will go back and. I think we're going to go back and look after our son, we, but it could be that events overtake us. It could be that we can't get out. It could be we get out, but we can't come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? We don't, we, we don't know. On, on balance, I, I don't know. Is he going to come? I, I can't really believe it. No. I can't really believe it. The BBC, it. just to give you a glimmer of hope, the BBC are just reporting this morning that he's actually pulled troops away from the border. Yeah. Or has said in, he's going out, to. In, out, in, yeah. out, shake it all about. Yeah, well, quite, do the hokey-cokey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, you know, yes, let's hope so. I, I think maybe that, that, that um, yeah, maybe, I mean, because I, I think once somebody said something to me, which was that um, uh, Putin doesn't telegraph his moves, generally, if he's serious. Mm. He will just act. He did in Crimea, as he did in the Donbass, as he did in Georgia, Syria, you know, in this, this, in this instance, he's telegraphing it well in advance and sitting back and enjoying, you know, the extreme discomfort of, of those he's torturing, you know, it's his pleasure, you know, and um, he hopes to gain from without, without um, uh, you know, uh, invading. That's the perfect thing of an extremist, you know. Uh, you want to threaten violence, achieve your ends, and go on to the next one. You know, you don't really want to get Im involved in a fight, um, but to, you know, that's 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 his mentality. You know, he's basically an extortionist. That's how you have to think of him. But the 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 tragedy is just where we are, is where Time Out, London's Time Out, uh, reckoned is the I think the 16th coolest neighbourhood. On the planet. Wow. So, so when my children come back here, they love it. They bring their friends. The friends really love it. You know, uh, they love this. There's a club scene. There's the cafes. There's the art scene. Um, and you know, it's 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 you know, okay. There, there, there's been corruption. There is corruption, but step by step, it is being addressed, and the economy is developing. All sorts of people are travelling to the west. They're coming back with ideas immediately throwing them into action and um that's that's amazing that's just, uh, well that's, yeah that's uh, what i'm interested in as well actually in 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 what you say about the fact that this is what putin fears the most yeah there is absolutely. now a model of what yeah. uh, what it could what life could be like essentially yeah right yeah. In but of course he closes he closes down his press so mm. that um, yeah uh russians don't see it very much it's, it had my wife that is had a um I think cousin came over here, and uh, and you know she's kind of fairly pro sort of Russian and so on. She she spent time in in Germany, mind you. She's living in Germany now, yeah. But anyway, she came here on her way back to I think to Russia. Anyway, she um she was shocked. She went to a supermarket and couldn't believe it. Everything's in the store. In fact, actually, it's much better. You know, I think the stores are much better uh, supplied than in Russia now because they have all these uh, sanctions on. I mean, Putin was. 
boasting about not being able to get Italian and and, and Swiss cheeses because they make their own, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's a bunker mentality, you know, mm -hmm. and in a sense, it is. It's going back, yeah, to, to um, a sort of Cold War, war, uh, war uh, mentality. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care. You know, his country should be, uh, you know, very wealthy. You know, mm -hmm. it's got all this uh, commodity wealth um, and it's got, you know, great conditions in science. It's got ma amazing technology and its defense. And what about its people? Its people are no better off than Ukrainians. And Ukrainians are now... The growth rate is outstripping uh, Russian growth rate. Um, yeah. And that's why, and interesting, that's why the communists actually, I, I think, uh, find why communism collapsed, because they saw countries like South Korea, uh, Japan, and all sorts of um, what were developing countries actually outstripping uh, in the Soviet Union in wealth. Well, and that pattern. In West like, Germany, right? Yes. Yeah, well, East Germany, West Germany. Yeah. You know? You know, and that, that I think may be what the long term solution to Crimea and Donbass is, you know, you, you, ju you just wait, really. And, 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 you know, I think, you know, I believe in pluralism and, and um, you know, the, the mixed economy that the West has got. And I think in time that will create uh, freedoms, rule of law um, and uh, greater material well-being. And that's what will um, win through in the end. If it's allowed to, of course, you know, the danger is, of course, Putin comes in and, and you know, tries to hold the country. But I don't I, I don't think it can work. It just no. can't work. Well, if he does do that, though, are you reassured by the presence of, of NATO forces? Are you reassured by Joe Biden in office, by Boris Johnson in office, all of these oh, people? OK, no, no, I'm not reassured. I think they've taken a very practical line, which is that uh, they're not going to have uh, British and American soldiers on the ground. Um, but I do think that, that uh, yeah, Putin, I mean, Biden made, I mean, I think it was dreadful what happened in Afghanistan, you know, the sudden withdrawal and so on, uh, when really there was very few, uh, you know, casualties, Western casualties in Afghanistan. And, and, and may, maybe the situation was dissolving, so they had to get out sooner or later, but to get out in the way he did, and the message that gave was, was, was enc just encouraged Putin, basically. But... I think that they have been um, quite quick to actually provide the weapons that Ukraine needs. Mm. So I wouldn't be overly critical of, of, of um, Biden or, 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 or Boris. I'd be far more critical of, you know, um, Germany. But sympathetic in a way, too, because the truth is that Germany's done an awful lot for Central and Eastern Europe and, and, and also Russia, trying to form a bridge, trying to... Um, uh, support them to democracy one way or the other, been the greatest contributors in many ways, but but that now they find themselves, you know, trying to be friends with everybody and be, perhaps ending up being, being friends with none, you mm -hmm. know, with their, their Nord Stream 2 was really, it was such a foolish sort of a um, line to adopt, you know, uh, giving Russia the ability to bypass Ukraine with gas supplies, you know, and um, you know, and and then you know Putin chopping off the taps to to Ukraine, creating the shortage of uh, energy. Um, I mean, Germany. Why the hell they don't start up? Why they immediately stop their uh, the closure of the nuclear power stations? I know they it's insane. Immediately, insane. Immediately, even on green grounds, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, once you've committed to a once a, a nuclear reactor is operating, you're left with the only downside, the only green downside, which is a spent fuel. So mm -hmm. use them till the end of their lifetime because they're greener than anything, you know? So, uh, so no, Germany's, but, um, no, but, but, you know, I think Boris has done pretty well. I mean, I know he's got this cake drama in the UK, <laughs> but frankly, from here, I just think it's... I know, it, it's sort of, Ukraine has put things into perspective, I must say, as far as us all talking about Boris Johnson having a slice of cake and a bottle of Prosecco. Was it a cake? Did he yeah. have a cake? Did it's, he get uh, three or was it maybe four events? Well, well, it was outside. I mean, give us a break, you know. Yeah. Mind yeah. you, I have to admit some, some interest here because he did open a building we designed. Ah. Uh, in Ukraine, we 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 um we designed it was an Olympics project. We designed it here, and it got built. And he very kindly came along and opened it. Um, oh, that's cool. And, and he arrived, he arrived, you know, with his bicycle and his and his clips, and he started to give a disastrous speech. 
dreadful. You know, everybody was looking around, looking at their feet. And then, I can't even remember the joke now. But then he, then he, hit, a, he hit a joke, got a titter, and then he was off. So I am a bit um, uh, prejudiced in favour of Boris. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's a racist. No. I think he's the centre of the centre ground politician. And um, maybe the right wing have turned on him. But, but, you know, I think he did a magnificent job. With the with the vaccines, not only did he control the intellectual rights for goodness sake, kept them for the UK, he gave them away free to the to to, to the third world or to the developing world, and they and they, they, they delivered the vaccines for a tenth of the price. I mean, what we I mean I can imagine. Okay, we all kind of like um, are sympathetic to the national health uh, workers and so on, but you know I, th I, I think in government there's all massive pressures of a different kind. You know, you're trying to make decisions for, to, you know, to life and death decisions at the same time, preserve the economy. You're working on incomplete information, probabilities. You're going to get extremely wound up. Mm -hmm. well, I can't see a big problem actually at the end of that, going out into the garden and having a drink. Sometimes the best ideas for solving problems come when you're winding down. So, I mean, I don't know. But if it turns out that he, he went to all these bloody parties and we're swinging it back, then, yeah, he's out. But, but but from what I've seen, eh, maybe he's gone to the brink. Maybe he's gone over a bit. Maybe I don't, you know, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, exactly. I get again, it pales in comparison significance when you look at what's going on in Ukraine. Do what's Ukraine been like during the pandemic, though? Is uh, is has this all sort of just made you think? Well, I mean, given that we could all be bombed in the coming days, the sort of yeah, the coronavirus again pales in well, comparison to what we're facing here. Well, I think I saw a cartoon this morning about um, uh, COVID restrictions are being relaxed on account of the war. Um, but <laughs> um, what to say? I mean, I think I don't think Ukraine took it so seriously initially. I mean, the joke going around was that, you know, you, you had to close the restaurants and the bars, so everybody closed the curtains and carried on inside. You know, there mm. was a bit of that going. I mean, Ukraine's, Ukrainians are naturally not perhaps the most law-abiding, you know, uh, people, I would say. And you can imagine... It comes from their history, you know. If you've got a history yes, of communism yes. and, and corruption and so on, you do tend to sort of like take what what politicians would say with a pinch of salt. So there's a bit of that going on, but I don't think the death rate is any higher than the UK's for that matter. And mm -hmm. now the vaccines are pretty much available. I um, mean, you got a young president uh, in. I think genuinely trying to do his best, you know. Uh, oh right, my wife has just said the computer that he's giving bonuses for vaccinations you get a thousand oh, right bonuses. okay that's okay. like 40 you get 40 you get 40 dollars for your first vaccination and then another 20 for the second vaccination so he's okay you know he's the uh, you know there's so much now so much more now uh of the bureaucracy has gone into um you know on the net you know mm. so it's becoming a very smart economy so it's always been very good at it and um, lots of people being sucked into Ukraine from the IT, including from Belarus, another, another thing to alarm Putin. So, no, I mean, but as I said, as we said at the top of this uh, uh, in interview, uh, I think people are calm. I think lots of people are, 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 are volunteering for these defense units and learning mm -hmm. how to shoot and so on. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what happens when, if Putin was successfully, successful conventionally? Can you imagine, you know? What you know, that's gonna they're gonna be killing these people, you know, yeah, in droves, it's, it's, you know, yeah. and, and it's nobody wants that. No, I mean, these are, could be cousins killing cousins, you know, it's it's uh, it's sick, it's really sick, you know, tragic, yeah, you know, it well, it is. And Phil, God, God bless you all. I hope it doesn't happen at all. Of course, I don't, but um, Phil Hudson, thank you very much for giving up your time and giving us an insight into what it's like actually, because it, I think it's been fascinating, frankly. Thank you so much for watching this video. Reasoned is a grassroots organization that's entirely funded by people like yourself. So if you're in a position to do so, please do consider supporting us by clicking the link to the side there.